6 p.m. January 19th, 2021. I call to order the Coney County Council meeting. First on the agenda is public comment session. I will remind the public that each comment is limited to four minutes. When one minute is remaining, I will hold up a one-minute card. And when time's up, I'll hold up the red card. Mr. Jackson. Good evening. My name is Kenneth Terry Jackson, Jr. I'm a resident of Fair Play. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to you this evening about a situation I'd like to bring to your attention. And I'd like to also acknowledge the neighbors from our area as well that are in support of what I'll be discussing with you tonight. Please, Katie. Okay, I got a presentation I'll run through real quick with some pictures. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide, but basically we're talking about Woodfield Road, Exit 4, I-85. You know there's a Lowe's truck stop there and a mobile, and there's a lot of problems with traffic now. And there's some potential development now going on with a Speedway gas station at that area, and also even, even an industrial park there. So I'd like to make sure you're aware of the traffic situations that we have. So uh, you're aware and planning as you go forward. Next slide, please, Katie. So the picture. So this is pretty complicated. I think you have. You all have a picture, a copy of this. When you have a chance to study it, I appreciate it. So I'm, the pictures that I'm going to show you really explain this a lot better. So we'll just go to the pictures now, please. So I'm standing on the bridge at I-85, looking down Old Dobbins Bridge Road, uh, towards the Love's Truck Stop. You you can see, and then there's the mobile station. This is not atypical. This is traffic we get most nights. A lot of nights. This is the problem we have right now with the existing um, developments are there. Next slide, please, Katie. Just to show you a few more. You'll see it even backs up onto the I-85 ramp. That's the I-85 northbound lane ramp coming off. You'll see they're backed up there. The loves, again, you can barely see the sign. It's primarily because the traffic's backed up to loves, but it also is impacted by the mobile station. Next slide, please. Um, We've already had problems. I mean, the guardrails get hit regularly. This is just from yesterday, and it was mangled a heck of a lot more than that. And they just repaired it real temporarily for now. But anyway, so this is this is at least twice this year. I think because of the traffic and all that, they're, they're having problems there. Next slide, please. Again, more pictures of the same showing again. Look at the backup all the way down on the I-85 off, off down ramp. And then the traffic that comes out of the mobile station has to come onto this lane as well just to get back on the road to get to the to the interstate so that even adds more to it in that area next slide please this happens to be a truck coming out of that area so now you got trucks coming this way you got trucks going that way you got trucks trying to get out it's uh it's very bad and of course for residents or other folks that are just trying to get through here it's it's not it's not a safe condition that's so it's more than an inconvenience and that's what i want to emphasize to it is not a safe condition next slide please just some more. I mean, it's more of the same. The, the, the speedway we're going to be talking about in a second was going to be over the interstate that way. So I'm facing now north and heading towards Seneca in this lane. Next slide, please. Um, even it gets to the sense. So it backs up on the loves. This is one reason it backs up because the trucks are just waiting to get in and get back in. This particular vehicle, and again, emphasizing the safety, he's pulled in there as far as he can. He's stopped, but half his truck is now in the lane of traffic coming up the road. And that's somewhat of a blind turn as well. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. And so, really quickly, you've got the loves was down what here, the mobile station's here, the, mo the, the speedway that's under development is here, and then down the road there's going to be another site potentially when that gets sold for a light industrial park. Next slide, please. So the main thing is, for tonight, for you guys, please, awareness. We need help in that area. We don't need things to just be approved without also improvements in the, in the road conditions. It's bad enough as it is, it can't handle worse. So I'm asking for your awareness and uh, involvement in the decision. I do plan on talking to the planning committee uh, and going through the same thing with them on Thursday. Any other advice that you guys would have to us so we can stay ahead of this as, as neighbors, I would appreciate any advice you could have, directions, things like that, and any other support. And that's it for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Mr. Mike Smith. I'm going to touch my notebook. I hope that's all right. My name is Mike Smith, and I'm coming before you tonight as a private citizen, not representing any organization or group. I'm asking for funding for a Greenway System Feasibility Study. The question that immediately comes to mind is, is there a need or genuine citizen interest in the Greenway System similar to Greenville's Swamp Rabbit Trail? Let's circle back a couple of years when there was a meeting at the Blue Ridge Community Center about a Greenway System. The meeting was very well attended with approximately 150 attendees. The speakers were the manager of the Swamp Rabbit Trail and the Traveler's Rest Mayor. Their theme was the influence the trail has had on bringing the communities together and the positive economic impact on these areas. Their comments were well received and there was a lot of positive feedback for a similar Greenway effort in Oconee. To further validate the citizens' interest, let's recall the recently completed comprehensive plan. The number five comment most mentioned was community connectivity. Hopefully I've established citizen interest for a greenway system. Now is the ideal time to fund the feasibility study because your strategic session is right around the corner and the budget process is coming up. Let's discuss the benefits and order of priority of a greenway system. First slide, please. Connecting of communities or developments that benefit all generations at different stages of their life. Let's mention two different generations. The aging in place generation, right here, that may need to go to the grocery store or pharmacy and no one is available to drive them. Or how about the younger generation whose parents are working and this person needs to go to a relative or friend's house. The Greenway is a real benefit. This traveling brings into focus benefit too. It is a greenway is an added safety net when people travel that don't drive. Following is increases property value in the area. After that, it increases support of small businesses along the greenway and within the communities. It is definitely considered an amenity for residential and office park developers. Next slide, please. It is safe for children's active lifestyle. There is no vehicular traffic. Obviously a tourist attraction. It is a year-round venue, and it goes without saying there are health benefits in walking, running, biking, or as family time. Now let's discuss possible areas that might be considered for a greenway system. Of immediate interest is a Highway 123 corridor between Clemson and Seneca, and I'm sure there are other possibilities. Next slide, please. This slide shows Highway 11 and the districts it goes through. As you can see, it connects several communities and or developments and is suited for greenway growth. The topography and the right-of-way lends itself as economically ideal for greenway development. Next slide, please. If a feasibility study is approved, I hope the specs include topics such as lessons learned when other systems were developed, their management issues, the funding sources, and last, and very important, a Greenway Master Plan for South Carolina Department of, Def of uh, Transportation to use as a reference. In closing, I have never known of a properly developed Greenway system that has not been hugely popular with the citizens. Now is the time to plan ahead with a feasibility study for a Greenway system. Thank you. Mr. Peter Barnes. Thank you. I'm the president of the Community Subdivision Homeowners Association. And I'm here to address issues regarding the approval by the council for a storage area on one of the highest hills in the county. Uh, we've had a serious problem. I should have brought a couple of slides to show myself, but you've probably seen the pictures. The difference in altitude between the lake and the uh, storage facility goes from 804 feet at the lake to uh, around 900 feet at the site. Consequently, that over 100 foot drop and the fact that they have now uh, denuded the top of that in order to build a storage facility with the heavy rains, we now get 100 year rains every two or three weeks, um, has caused phenomenal runoff with a great deal of mud. 
uh, those of you who have seen the picture, it is completely uninundated the black backyard of one of our residents. That was on January the 1st. There was another one December 31st. The mud flowing down the hill from the storage site goes under the highway through a culvert and then comes rushing out the other side. So it drops the full 100 feet by the time it gets to the lake. The inlet that's there that goes down to the sailing club is now deep brown and it's silting up. We contacted uh, DHEC and they responded very quickly and a Miss Nicole Vesey was very helpful, but she pointed out that DHEC does not have a lot of clout. Uh, in the second visit she had with us in later this month, uh, she brought an engineer with her and he described to us the requirements of storm water management. Um, the KSA's knowledge is there's no storm water management for Oconee County. Um, and, uh, we asked Ms. Uh, Vizi, was there any other South Carolina County stormwater plant she could recommend as a, a, a template? And she recommended the one from uh, Anderson County, and she sent a copy, as I understand, to Mr. Adam Chapman. Uh, members of the KS, uh, we would like very much for the council and the uh, planning department to start at least drafting the stormwater management ordinance. And members of the uh, QE Subdivision Association Board would be glad to volunteer their help if we can in any way with observations, pictures, and data. The other issue we have is a lighting concern. Uh, as I said, the storage unit is going to be on the highest point in this part of the county. So it's going to be a beam of light at night when it's lit up, which has the people at uh, uh, several other uh, subdivisions up the lake concern because when they look down the lake they're just going to see this huge lit object at night. So um, we don't know if there is a light pollution audience uh, ordinance but if there is one we'd like to see it and if not we'd like to uh, encourage you folks to uh, think about making a, uh, a pollution ordinance, a light pollution ordinance when it comes to lighting along the full length of uh, South Carolina 130. Um, since the whole area from Old Clemson Highway to Duke Energy's nuclear, nuclear uh, power plant is a federal opportunity zone, there's likely to be a lot more development along South Carolina 130. So the sooner storm management, management light pollution can be addressed, the better. Uh, the residents of the uh, subdivision, along with other developments bordering the lake, <coughs> hope that the council and planning department will carefully consider further development along the highway of this beautiful corridor with its <clears throat> beautiful such a roadway and the impact on the uh, very beautiful suburban uh, uh, subdivisions along the lake edge. Thank you for your attention. Ms. Martha Steele. <laughs> Good evening, and I want to thank you. I'm Martha Steele, and I live in Kiwi Subdivision, uh, where Peter Barnes does, and I want to thank the council for letting me come and uh, speak tonight. First, I would like to commend the council planning committee on creating some design standards for eight specified corridors in Oconee County. We are very fortunate in Oconee County to have such a beautiful area, and, such, and along the roads is gorgeous. During this pandemic, my husband and I try to get out of the house every day and take a ride. And we certainly have enjoyed driving and looking and, and enjoying the corridors that we have in this county. Uh, we're so thankful that the council is trying to create some standards to manage the growth along these corridors. Now, since we live along 130, we are especially concerned about 130. And the safety of the highway, it's two lane, it's heavily traveled, all the subdivisions north of us up all the way to Salem and beyond, Duke Power Company, everybody uses those roads. Sometimes we have to wait for 20 cars to go by before we can pull out to go to Seneca. It's that heavy. There have been numerous accidents. Uh, we're hoping that this planning uh, 
the things that the county and the planning committee has done will help. And one of the light, the lighting along the area is also of much importance because lights can be dangerous. They can distract you uh, they're, if they're bright. And most of the subdivisions along the corridors, all the corridors, have very subdued lighting. They're, they're non-invasive. They don't bother the people that live in the communities there. And we're hoping, we would like to ask the council to consider adding a provision that any signage near a residential area conform with the subdued, low-key lighting of the housing area. Low-key lighting that would not impact in a negative way any of the residents. Secondly, I would like to voice our concerns, as Mr. Barnes did, over the runoff that occurred in the late Kiwi Cove area along Kiwi subdivision during the heavy rains we had on December the 31st and January the 1st. Two culverts run from the Newry side of 130 over into our side. I just pictured, Peter had a lot of pictures also to show the horrible runoff that was there for days. Much of the, the, we residents feel that a lot of it was caused by the clearing of the land for those storage units. And we feel that the, if the, when, if the construction site created so much runoff, even with the silt fences in place, then we can also expect contaminated runoff when the storage unit site is completed and there is a very large area of impervious parking and driveway space for water and debris to drain from. I implore the county to establish some storm water ordinances to help control runoff everywhere and maintain the cleanliness of our lakes. Thank you so very much for letting me speak tonight. Council has received 11 emails with 16 signatures which all support a Greenway system. In consideration of time, I will only read two submissions which are representative of all messages. The first message, email. I would encourage County Council to support a feasibility study for a Greenway in Oconee County. There can be benefits from their type of feature as evidenced in Greenville County with their Swamp Rabbit Trail. Significant growth and development have occurred along the Swamp Rabbit Trail. If you complete a study, you will at least know options for location, costs, and potential benefits quantified. It's forward thinking. Thank you for your consideration, Kevin Minton. Second email. As a resident of Coney County, I fully support consideration of an Coney County Greenway feasibility study. I've seen the tremendous economic benefit that Greenville has experienced on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. All along the trail areas have seen resurgence and addition of businesses. Areas that were blighted are seeing retail and residential development, attracting both new residents and visitors, including many younger consumers. It will be a perfect way to further showcase why Coney County is an attractive place to live and work. Virginia Strong Tidman. The following people submitted emails that will be entered into the official record. I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Robert Royer, David Bennett, Hal and Ann Blanchett, Roy Aulabach, Hayes Cross, Ralph and Sarah Mosca, William and Lenora Mullen, Kurt and Sarah Hale, Bill Rickardson, Ryan Norodoski, Kevin Minton, and Virginia Strong Tidman. Councilmember Collins. Mr. Chairman. So the Declaration of Independence states that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And amongst these is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Chief amongst these rights is the right to life, and the protection of these rights is an affirmative duty of federal, state, and local governments. The right to life, the most fundamental right, is violated each and every day, with almost 900,000 babies murdered in this nation each year. As a council, 
a county, and more importantly, a community, we can preserve and defend life locally. We can defend life locally by declaring Oconee County as a sanctuary county for the unborn. And with that said, I will be introducing a resolution to be placed on the agenda for the regularly scheduled February 2nd council meeting. And this resolution states a resolve to defend all life from fertilization to natural death. And in a time where the truth has become inverted and what's right is now perceived as wrong, and what's wrong is now perceived as right, it's bold to stand against evil, and they say, not in my backyard. But as believers, we are called to be bold. God's word states in Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So as a county, we can be bold and we can defend the innocent. That's all. Thank you. I have two comments. The Greenway system on Highway 11 near the town of Salem would be revitalization for the northern part of the county that needs revitalization. I fully support a feasibility study for a Greenway, Greenway system. Second item, I've been contacted by the town of Salem, the Cliffs, and the residents of Kiwi Key concerning the lack of an urgent care availability in that area. It would be great if Prisma would do a feasibility study of providing an urgent care in that area. <laughs> Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to touch base on the, uh, the fair play area, as we, it's, it's great to see pictures. I think a lot of people don't understand the amount of traffic that actually occurs out there. Um, and it has always been one of those things when we've talked about industrial development and economic development and fair play, making sure it was continue to be safe in those areas. There does need to be some corrections that, that are made out there, especially as we go through with growth. And those are the things that we've tried to work on, um, especially with ingress and egresses in meetings that um, you know I've been involved with, with the state about how we go with these, these uh, exits. Luckily in that one, the um, on and off ramp is a little bit longer than some of the other rural counties. So I'll, I'll say that that's great, but there is some traffic issues that always happen with that, that gas station. It's a very popular gas station. I know people don't even know, a lot of people don't even know that there's Arby's in Fairplay, but I've known it the day it was out there. So thank you for bringing that up, and I think council is very aware of that, and we'll continue to, to do that as well. Um, the uh, touching on the Greenway Trail. Um, you know, as a family that visits these in other uh, other counties and other states, um, definitely one of those things that's great to um, go out there. So it's a uh, low budget entertainment. You get on your bike or go running and stuff like that, and it encourages community development. So I appreciate y'all bringing that up as well. Um, the uh, st storage uh, storm drainage. You know, we talked about that not not just there, but all over this county that the water actually goes to a specific place. I know people don't always believe that. <laughs> believe that They think the water goes underground. Those are the things that, that water finds a place to go and pollution finds a place to go. And I know in a lot of the cleanup efforts that we've done, part of the reason we've done that is because the actual amount of pollution that goes into there. And from somebody that grew up here and, and knows how great our water source is, if our water gets polluted around here, we're going to have some big issues. And, and I think we, we need to protect what, what you know, we were given. We need to pr protect that for the citizens in the area. And that um, has to do with septic systems around the lake as well. I know there's a lot of things that's um, happened with those that has improved. So I'm really appreciative of that. The 130, uh, I was at Anderson, and we actually talked. Um, Secretary Hall was leading that meeting, so if you haven't, you want to send somebody a message about traffic, uh, Secretary Christy Hall, who's the state secretary. Um, it's amazing. I don't know how she returns emails, but she gets to them. And they have done a lot of studies on Highway 130, 123, and connecting counties. She does a really great job, but it really helps when areas get together and talk about, hey, this specific area right here, um, we've had a lot of accidents and possible fatalities. Um, you know, she's very easy to find. You just Secretary Christie called. 
shoot her office an email. She'll put somebody in touch with you to talk about those specific areas. Um, Stanton Road is, is, is one that has always concerned me. Um, so uh, I appreciate y'all bringing that up. But those are the things that, you know, we as a county can do a lot, but it also helps when we get a little bit of support toward the state. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Mr. Chair, um, I, I also would like to echo uh, council member comments and also appreciate y'all bringing these uh, issues to, to our attention. Um, you know, with growth, there comes uh, impacts to not only property owners, but also our environment. And it is important that we uh, as the secret has gotten out about Oconee County, this is a great place to live. And we certainly do not want to lose the, the magic that is Oconee County. We don't want to lose the special uh, attributes that make this place um, a great place to live, work, and, and play. And so um, thank you for bringing those to our, our attention. Um, through the, I think, through the planning Committee, we will need to address uh, and explore the stormwater management system. We have talked about it uh, years ago, and I, as I, if I recall correctly, it was going to require a substantial cost to implement that. And it seems that, uh, in talking with y'all, DHEC is not able to effectively regulate these type of problems, and so now we're going to have to deal with it. Um, additionally, speaking of road safety, Highway 130, it's, it's a, a common, a well-known problem on many of our corridors. Safety is not being addressed, and on the state roads, it's been challenging. We're told there was a mis, uh, you know, misunderstanding that county council and municipalities have no uh, impact on these decisions. It's only DOT. Well, it turns out... DOT looks to count local ordinances before they issue a uh, encroachment permit, I believe. And so it, it actually, we, we are the ones who must address it if it's going to be dealt with. So, um, you know, fortunately we've made some progress on the corridor plans, and I think there's going to be a first reading of an ordinance tonight. At least it addresses some of the light pollution concerns um, and signage concerns. But uh, I, I think these are, appreciate y'all again bringing these to our attention and, and we will be working on them and bringing them through committee or to council as appropriate. <coughs> and finally, I agree 100% on the Greenway, just seeing what it's done to revitalize communities around our state and around our country. Um, those are economic engines and don't require a whole heck of a lot of public investment in order to get a very good return for the residents not only in, in um, uh, tax revenue, but also in quality of life, which is so important as we look at economic development throughout this country. Quality of life is very important in recruiting talent. So thank you for whoever, all, the, all those who spoke about that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Pray with me if you'd like to. Well, Father, thank you for this day that you've made. Thank us, or thank you for our bodies, that, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And without your power, without your incredible will and insight, our bodies wouldn't even hold together. So help us to be appreciative uh, of these most fundamental things. And thank you for this wonderful place that we do live in. Uh, it is beautiful and help us to be good stewards of it. Give counsel wisdom as they chart a course um, and balance the competing interests. Give them your insight. And as we talk about life and think about um, love, help us to love our neighbor, to get our eyes off of ourselves, to be slow to hear, or excuse me, slow to speak and quick to hear, and slow to anger, that we'd be guided by your love. And let this be your meeting. I pray in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Mr. Durham, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes, uh, just as a matter of procedure, from now on, on the votes that we vote, it's been hard for the, for the council clerk to tell what the vote is. So if we'd say aye and raise our hand, especially with these masks, it's hard to tell what anyone's saying. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the January 5th, 2021 regular meeting minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ms. Brock. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of council. We do have quite an extensive agenda, so I'll keep it short and sweet this evening. First of all, in your backup materials and handed out to you in documentation was the year ending 2020 financials, which is halfway point for our fiscal year, as ours does run from July 1st to June 30th. Um, we are well on track for this year as far as expenditures and savings. We did not get a report last month because there were some delays in receivables and payables. The pandemic is still having an impact on the timing of us but, but being charged for state fees and receiving revenues back from other agencies. So this is the most up-to-date. Um, second is, I was uh, flipping through the board and commission questionnaires and appointment requests and that's a pretty significant amount of people that have interest in becoming a part of this organization and serving in a way to benefit the citizens of the county and I just want to thank each one of those individuals for doing that and all of the members of the public who have come in to share their thoughts with us about Oconee County this evening. Mr. Root. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Just one matter. It's a housekeeping matter for 21-06. It's been talked about previously. This is the traffic um, design standards. If you all pass that this evening, that will as written into the ordinance. It will need to go to the Planning Commission for a public hearing. It's a 30-day window that that happens within. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that as you head in that direction. Okay, thank you. Tony County Conservation Bank. Funding approval, approval request. Peggy Moore, 58.6 acres, Oconee County Conservation Bank Board, Conservation Easement. Oconee County Conservation Bank Board unanimously approved on Tuesday, December 15, 2020, for council to approve funding in the amount of $10,000 for a conservation easement to Oconee Soil and Water Conservation District. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, this is 58 acres, uh, about six miles southeast of Westminster. It's a working farm, and the Oconee County Conservation Bank protects scenic properties, natural resource properties, working farms, historic sites. Um, we took the application through our review process, and I'll just point out uh, a couple of things you have uh, should have our findings from our ordinance that are required and things that stick out for me is that uh, the the landowner there has already put in conservation um, features to prevent erosion uh, to prevent erosion control erosion and to uh, help clean water there um, they've got a buffer along their stream They've got 42% prime and statewide soils. It's actually within an area of the county that South Carolina Department of Natural Resources has looked at as, as a very important part of the county for conserving and preserving the prime soils. Um, another aspect of it that was stuck out to us at the Conservation Bank was that they have approximately $105,000 of other funding coming in to pay the landowner for putting the conservation easement on it and reducing the potential for development. Our grant of $10,000 um, that we're recommending to the council will make the funding that they're getting at about $115,000 the reduction in the value of the property 
by taking away their development rights decreases the property's value by about $146,000. So that, that's money that they could get if they were going to sell it. Um, and they're contributing $30,000 of that themselves. They're you know, not getting paid for that part of the reduction in the value of their property. Um, the Coney Soil and Water Conservation District will be the monitoring and enforcing agency for the conservation easement. And we've heard a lot tonight about the beauty of Oconee County, and that's a lot of what the Coney County Conservation Bank is for, is to protect what we have, what makes us special. And I think one of the, the, the neatest and most interesting parts of this is that this is purely private property, individuals owning it, taking what is to me a courageous stand in the sense of not everybody will make this decision to perpetually conserve property. But what I see in talking to people in my practice and knowing people who've done this is that they see something on their property that they think has enough value that people should be able to enjoy it forever. And they want it to be there. And I think that's a really courageous act and I'm glad that they're, they'll do it. A lot of folks are not gonna do it. I think we're lucky that we do have people that will do that. I think it benefits all of us when that happens. Um, again, our program is, is amazing in that the value of this, the fair market value per acre is $4,500. It's going to be reduced by $2,500 by taking away those development rights. So the cost to us here is $171 per acre. That's what we put into this project to conserve something that, that is going to be a working farm forever. Um, I don't think you can do any better than that. It costs the county out of third-party funding, not taxpayer funding, $171 an acre to permanently conserve this property that will, in my opinion, be a benefit to everybody forever. So we put this before you asking that you will um, uh, approve our recommendation to make this grant to uh, Peggy Moore and uh, Coney Soil and Water Conservation District. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Second. Well, any discussion? Yeah. <clears throat> My question is, let's say that for some reason the uh, Peggy Moore family decides that they want to get out of this. What do they do? They're not going to be able to get out of it. Okay, that's what I want to know. And that, that's what in perpetuity means. It's, that's why it's a tough decision, is that it's permanent. And it's somebody who's knowing it and loving it right now saying, I want you, and I want the generations behind me, to be able to enjoy the same thing I enjoy. We've all lost things in our life and wished that it was still as good as it was. Here's a way that we keep it as good as it was. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Kind of go along with, with what Glenn, Mr. Hart was just speaking of. You know, God gave us this creation, right? So we want to preserve it. I mean, that's, that's, that's our role. Uh, also, we want to preserve, preserve property rights for future generations. Mm -hmm. So really, the choices are future generations, and their property rights is restricted by, this, by these choices right here that are locking up large chunks of land forever. Mm -hmm. you got to think about it. If, it, if their grandparents or great-grandparents had locked up large tracts of land, we'd all be living on top of each other here. So, mm -hmm. so person this, you know, it's, it's good, but there is a negative side effect in that it does restrict property rights. And, uh, you know, some states still do this, and they'll have a 10-year opt-out in the contracts, or five-year. And that may be something to think about. That can be handled at state legislation, but maybe as the Conservation Bank, if we could award money with contracts that does give people that choice five, 10 years from now, hey, times change, and that would preserve the land, and it also would preserve, preserve property rights for the generations to come. Well, it's a federal program. It comes to the IRS. And the, you know, you have to meet certain standards to put conservation easements on property under the Eternal Revenue Code, and that's why you can't get out of it. Right. You're getting, you're going to get financial benefits right. now, and 
Yeah, you, that, North Dakota, I think, is the state. They allow a 10-year opt-out. Now, obviously, if you opt out in 10 years or you go another 10 years, 20 years, there's back taxes to be paid, right? Because there's, there's tax breaks associated with this. But that's just, uh, we want to preserve the land, but we want to preserve the property rights as well for the generations to come after us, not just their children, but children's children and children's children. And I think it's the kind of thing you always have competing interest. And that's, to me, why it's a courageous act is that somebody says, you know, I want, I think, I'm making this decision now because I know this land, that 150 years down the road, 1,500 years down the road, somebody's going to be thanking me for having the courage to exercise my private property rights and protect this. And that's, you know, it's, uh, it's a really hard decision, and it's not taken lightly. And you don't do it. I mean, we as lawyers, when we talk to folks that are thinking about putting conservation easements on their property, we say, don't do it because you think you're going to get a good tax break or a state planning break. Do it because you love this property and because you value it and you think that, you believe that, down the road, they're going to thank you for that. And so it's a, it's a tough decision, I think courageous, and it's one of those where you have to weigh the values. And I think that you're actually giving something to somebody down the road, not taking it. And so that's why we do it. That's why we have a conservation bank. Mr. Chairman, the county's not taking away property rights. Right. This is a citizen. Purely private. It's an individual decision. You've seen the amount of documentation that comes through for that person to go through a review the amount of information that you all provide to that person, the, it is, it's very, very clear what this conservation is. Very, very clear. That's right. Um, and so I just, I just want to make sure that that's clear that this individual, they come to us or they come to y'all with the proposal and then y'all take them through this step. This is not something that's done in 10 days. It's not something that's done, honestly, this it seems like most of the ones that I have seen are three, four months at a time to finish all documentation. That's right, sometimes um, longer. So, so it's not, you, you have time to ask questions, you have time to talk to your family, um, and it is that person's individual to, to do that. That's right, and so, and, I mean, an example in this, they. They're getting a grant from the South Carolina Conservation Bank of $31,625 for the Natural Resource Conservation Service out of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They're getting $73,250. They're getting $10,000 from us. They wouldn't get those grants if it wasn't permanent. They wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't permanent. So it's, again, you have to make a choice. And, of course, not everybody's going to do that, and there will be will be built out, not in our lifetime, but there'll be a time in the future when it's not all pastures and forests. It'll be homes, it'll be residential. And I really, really believe, if you look at it, those folks down the road will be thankful that these places are preserved either as God made them or as how you've worked with God to steward it as a farmer, you know, and not as a subdivision. And, and it's, it's hard to do. I have family members who struggle with this in South Georgia and said no. But I've also had family members who said, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. And it is the right of the property owner to enter into Purely an individual conservation bank board? Individual's choice. Correct. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Sure. And it is, it is the property owner right now, they are entering it voluntarily. You're not saying it was the county. But the conservation board, you know, incentivizes this, which does lock up land for future generations. And they do give up those rights, so the contract now may be, hey, you can have this head of cattle, or you may have to fence out this creek, but you don't own the rights, and those rights can be traded. And who knows, 10, 15, 20, 100 years from now, how restricted those would be. I'm just forcing concern. Thank sure, you. I understand. And that's a common concern. That's why most people will not do this. And so it's, to me, it's, it's special when somebody will, and it's rare. It really is. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.
you. Public hearing for the following ordinance. Ordinance 2023, an ordinance granting certain easement rights to the city of Seneca, the Seneca Rail Park, for the purpose of construction, constructing, maintaining, and operating pipelines, manholes, and related items for the purpose of conveying potable water, sanitary, sanitary sewer, industrial waste, and other matters related thereto. We have had three people signed up for public hearing. Uh, Ellen Jackson. Ellen Jackson. Okay. This Mr. Jackson may be possibly mistaken, sir. It's, it's Ellen. He spoke during com public comment first. Oh. Okay. He mistakenly signed up. He may have signed up for both. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Alicia Walker. Is that another one that signed up twice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Ridgeway. Mr. Ridgeway does not sign up for regular public. Jeff Ridgeway? I'm not Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may, can, can we, why don't we change the color? Because that's happened before on public here. Do, do one a different color okay. that way. Because it just happens at times if they have the thing in the face. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So with Jeff Ridgeway not being here, I close public hearing ordinance 2020-23. Third reading of ordinance 2020-23. An ordinance granting certain easement rights to the city of Seneca at the Seneca Rail Park for the purpose of constructing, maintaining, and operating pipelines, manholes, and related items for the purpose of obeying potable water or sanitary sewage, industrial waste, and other matters related thereto. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Second reading of the following ordinance. Ordinance 2020-24. An ordinance amending Chapter 32 of the Oconee County Code, Code of Ordinances in certain limited regards and particulars only regarding the removal of distance requirements currently found in Section 32-181 of the Oconee County Code of Ordinances. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> this is a correction because of the planning and the um, council before us overreached and now that there's money like several million dollars up here they've gone back and redid the uh, distance because they were going to cut themselves out of money so this is a correction to what could have been part of the four P's if you're in the military you'll know what those are thank you any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance 2025-2025, an ordinance authorizing Oconee County to enter into an energy savings performance arrangement between Oconee County and Johnson Controls, Inc. and a related lease purchase arrangement not to exceed $3,400,000 between Oconee County and one or more lenders, each as described in the South Carolina Code, annotated 11-27-110, and other related matters. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. have, we, have we evaluated the costs associated with using county employees' facility maintenance? to perform this. I mean, change out LED light bulbs, ask the fluorescent to burn out, install smart thermostats. I mean, there's, there's the county staff and the board is available to do that. Which, yes, could save you energy costs, but also save you upfront costs as well. Again, y'all been talking about this since last year. 
So has that been considered? <coughs> Ms. Bob. Yes, I may, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Durham, I think that's an excellent question, and yes, sir, we did evaluate doing that. Essentially, we would need to hire double our staff to be able to do the work that we're currently doing now, in addition to the work that is in the contract price that we're looking at. We even considered contracting out doing some of that work. County employees, our facility maintenance department has 15 people. A county county maintains more than 1 million square feet. It is an impossible task considering that the number of staff and the number of square feet that we have just with regular maintenance altogether, not, not, not including any upgrades. Um, honestly, I think this may be an efficiency in that department. We have taken on a life after lockup position in that department in recent years, and there was a request last year for yet an additional employee just to keep up with some of the maintenance, especially on the HVAC and plumbing issues that we've had. Our buildings are uh, old and under maintained in previous years. So hopefully with the upgrades that we're looking at doing, with the efficiencies, especially in the mechanical upgrades on the FEM report that we just spoke about earlier, it would free up enough of our staff members' time to where we could eliminate the necessity for adding another position in future years coming. Sure. So I, I'll plan on voting to move it to a third reading, but I want to spend some time with Ms. Brock and stuff before the third and final reading. That's all. Sure. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 First reading of the following ordinances. Ordinance 2021-04, an ordinance requiring individuals to wear face coverings in certain facilities owned or operated by Coney County, sunset provision included, and other matters related thereto. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ordinance 2021-05. An ordinance amending Chapter 32 of the Oconee County Code of Ordinances in certain limited regards and particulars only regarding the establishment of Lake Corridor signage standards and other matters related thereto. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the county spent the better part of last year working on a sign ordinance. And then here we go again with another ordinance for signs. But I think the biggest what troubles me the most about this is it's, it's in essence creating a non-citizen induced zone in this lake corridor. And uh, personally, I just feel like that's the can of worms we don't need to be opening. That's all. Mr. Yes, Jim. <clears throat> Are we getting to the part where we talk about the corridor? I've got it mapped here in, in black. I don't have any concern with the people that live on the lake. Well, what about the poor people that live on this same road that you're putting in that have lived there all their lives or their family has before the lake was built and these other subdivisions sprung up? They didn't come up overnight. They've been slowly coming up because I'm a surveyor and I've worked in each one of them. And this corridor when it goes up 130 and crosses the lake again, there's one subdivision, and from there to the uh, Salem City Limits line, they, there's all kind of different people that have lived there all their lives and struggled, and they're not, they're not lucky enough to have one of the places on the lake. So I'm, I'm concerned about the, the poor people and the conditions that they have will be forced into with this. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Ordinance 2021-06, 20, an ordinance amending Chapter 32 of the Coney County Code of Ordinances in certain limited regards and particulars only 
regarding the establishment of traffic corridor design standards and other matters related thereto. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right, so we, we can label an overlay. Let's call it what it is. It's, it's force down, top force top down zoning. And we're supposed to be control free areas. And if we pass this, all it's going to do is just add another layer of bureaucratic burden on the small businesses, and just make it that much more difficult to earn a living here in Oconee County. That's all. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair, I basically of what I said a while ago is it, but uh, this is just the beginning, folks. When I was running for re-election in May, I told you what was going to happen. And now this is the beginning of it. So just hang on to you and see what, what comes down the pike. Thank you. Any other discussion? I would like to amend the motion that once passed today that it is referred to the Planning Commission to hold a public hearing and direct that it be returned to council for our meeting on March 2nd, 2021. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, and I probably should have made myself more clear. It'll automatically go there. It's written into the ordinance, but thank you for speaking to that. Okay. But, you know, if you all vote to pass it, I'll send it to the Planning Commission. They'll have that here. I will draw that. need to move to amend. I will, I will draw that amend. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. First and final reading. Is done scheduled. Discussion regarding action items. Consignment and wear parts for Oconee Quarry. This is the Oconee Quarry Department, the Rock Quarry, requesting $99,000. On July 21st, 2020, Council approved an estimated $200,000 for the purchase of wear and consignment parts as needed for the Sandvik. Mo mobile crushing plant to Screen Tech LLC. The Rock Quarry has spent to date $86,355.93 with Screen Tech LLC and $14,579.46 with Sandvik for consignment and wear parts for a total amount of $100,935.39. The support received from Screen Tech LLC has not met the Rock Quarry's expectations or needs. Staff is requesting approval to purchase the needed wear and consignment parts from Sandwick Mining and Construction USA LLC for the remainder of fiscal year 2021. The dollar amount requested is estimated due to not knowing what parts will be needed for the year. It is staff recommendation that Council 1 approve the award for Sandvik Ware and consignment parts as needed to Sandvik Mining and Construction USA LLC an estimated amount of $99,000 for the remaining fiscal year 2021 and allow the administrator to approve, number two, and allow the administrator to approve future your purchase is directly from Sandvik Mining and Construction USA LLC for service and sales as long as the amounts do not exceed amounts <laughs> budgeted and approved by council in future years for the Sandvik Mobile Crushing Plants repairs. Is a motion to approve? I make a motion as stated. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I have a question. <clears throat> is this uh, living up to its promised potential? Mr. Chairman and Council, if I may, yes, sir, we, um, we've exceeded the promised potential that we received from Sandvik. Um, we are very delighted. It's a strange thing how the Lord works. He, he lets a few things go wrong, and then he lets you see the light on how they go right. We, um, now that we have the support, and I believe Billy and Tom are both here, buying a, being able to get the parts directly from Sandvik, knowing that we have the wear parts on the site, knowing that it has been commissioned and all of the processes that we had gone through from was it December when we had the discussion and executive session for releasing the final payment. 
Um, yes, it is living up to its hype. We have uh, had two other quarry directors come and view our equipment in operation, and I quote, that is a fast cat, I think was the best one we've heard. Amen. Yes, sir. Keep your fingers crossed that the weather keeps complying with us. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I think the biggest thing with buying any kind of piece of equipment, nobody ever said it was going to be perfect. Nobody ever said the human factor is perfect in it. But, you know, I, I sit up here, I support all of y'all at the Rock Quarry. I know it's a tough job. I know it's a tough job. And nobody ever talks about when it runs right. They talk about when it runs wrong. I have never gotten a call about how great the Rock Quarry is. I'm just telling you. But I know how good it performs when it's performing. And, and uh, has, has everything met the expectation? That's, that's the biggest purchase since I've been on council. It's one of the biggest purchases this county's ever made. Um, and expectations are set high with big purchases. And, and I think that the, uh, the learning curve was bigger than what, it probably, what we probably thought it was. Um, but I, I, I do want to state that I am 100% behind the quarry, have always been. I have never been for selling the quarry, never will be for selling the quarry. And I do support our staff. I think our administration has done a great job. And it's probably had a lot of uncomfortable conversations because, you know, we get, you know, hit up here. We need to do everything we can. It is a great asset. I mean, it is a great asset. And it saves our county and it saves our citizens a lot of money because of what it is. We got to get into better rock. That rock's real soft, and that's that's the environment. That's that's what the soil is. Um, so I just wanted to speak to that. And I, I, I very much appreciate what y'all are doing. I know it's tough. Any other discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed. Three. 2021 Ford F-250s with utility bodies. The Road Bridges Department requests $128,475. This purchase is for three 2021 Ford F-250 cab and chassis trucks with the NAPI utility bodies for roads and bridges. They will be used in the daily operation of the Roads and Bridges Department. These trucks will be replacing a 2008 Ford F-150, a 2008 Ford 250, and a 2006 Ford F-150, which will be assigned to another department or sold as surplus via public auction or gov deals. The fleet maintenance director also approves this purchase. The South Carolina State contract delivery days after receipt of order states 180 days, therefore these vehicles will be delivered on or before July 19, 2021. It's staff's recommendation to approve the purchase of all three trucks. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? On behalf of the road department, thank you. Okay. Two, 221 Ford es Escape SUVs. Assessor's Department, $51,808. This purchase is for two 2021 Ford Escape SUVs to be used by the assessor's office. They will be used by staff to inspect properties within Oconee County for property assessment purposes. Santee Automotive LLC of Manning, South Carolina, was awarded South Carolina State Contract 4400022504 for compact crossover wagon gas electric hybrid SUVs. The new vehicles will be will replace aging high mileage vehicles currently used by the assessor's office. The vehicles being replaced will be reassigned to another department or sold as surplus at a later date. The fleet maintenance director also approves this purchase. Staff recommendation is the purchase by all two. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two Dodge Durango <coughs> PPVs, Sheriff's Office, $61,080. Fiscal year 2021 
capital replacement plan includes two Dodge Durango police pursuit vehicles for the sheriff's office. The new vehicles will replace high mileage vehicles or vehicles that have been involved in accidents and deemed a total loss. The high mileage vehicles being replaced will be sold as surplus or replace older vehicles used in other county departments. The fleet maintenance director also approves this purchase. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Oh, excuse me, discussion? Discussion? I have oh. discussion. Discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, so I spoke with the sheriff about this, and, uh, you know, he said these were for school resource officers, so he was wanting to go with the Durangos because they don't need as much heavy-duty use as, like, a patrol officer, which saves the county per vehicle about $8,000, which I think is tremendous that he's smart and looking ahead and thinking out for the taxpayers. But as I was researching this in past vehicles, I think I discovered, well, I know I discovered something disturbing. You know, we purchased, or in December, purchased the administrator new vehicle for $60,000, which was, you know, a luxury, and the quote, Jerry Barnett, tripped out Tahoe. You got to think about priorities here, right? The administrator could have had a $30,000 vehicle that would have served the same purpose to get her from A to B. And there would have been enough left to buy another deputy vehicle and to potentially get the funding and put another deputy on the road. I mean, there's areas in this county that are underserved in police protection. I know Mountain Rest, people feel like they're on their own. They call for police, you know, they might get there too late. And it's, it's not different in your area, Mr. Davis, and uh, Long Creek, people being robbed blind, and I'm sure not much different in fair play. And, and we need more officers, and we need substation in some of these areas to offer protection. You know, another deputy, another car on the road, could have been one less drunk driver, one less death, you know, one more child protected. And that's priorities that we need to be looking at going forward. I mean, that's what's done, it's done. But uh, we just got to focus on what's important. That's all. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 2021, case 590SN. Four wheel drive backhoe, Rock Quarry Department, $105,659.07. The purchase is for a 2020 case 590 SN backhoe that will be used to load small pickups and trailers in a separate, safer area from dump trucks and heavy equipment. Due to recent fatal accidents in other quarries, MSHA recommends that quarries do not drive small vehicles in a large truck's potential path. Therefore, the Coney County Rock Quarry is creating an area to load small pickups and trailers. This will keep them away from dump trucks and heavy equipment, which will provide a safer environment for small vehicles. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to thank council for pushing for that millage for vehicle replacement plan, as you see, as we're, we're going through tonight. Um, you know, it was, you know, we're replacing a lot of vehicles um, that, that are, have seen their better, uh, better time. We're also creating a lot of, you know, a safer environment. So um, I know that was a difficult decision, but I really appreciate council uh, pushing through with that. And as we see tonight, we're starting to get back on track with vehicle purchases. There's a lot of research done when we're buying equipment and buying vehicles. And, um, you know, if we look into that, we'll probably understand it a little bit better. Um, and, and working with those departments as they're deciding on what equipment is best for them. I've had to also look into that as well because question, you know, why are we purchasing this, you know, and uh, appreciate the research that goes into that. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Any other discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Ms. Brock, I looked this up on Machine Trader, and we're getting a good deal. May I, for one moment, thank you, Mr. Hart. <laughs> and I appreciate you looking it up. It always helps to have extra eyes and ears. Um, and specifically, um, I'd really like to thank Tom and Billy both. We have, in years past, had a plan to move the small vehicle loading area and it's now become a necessity. This is a use of fund balance. I do want to state on the record, it does have it in the agenda item summary. 
It's included in the backup. This was a um, piece of equipment that we had planned to purchase next year. Obviously, we'll, we won't need to purchase it next year, so there will be that rollback to fund balance. And just as of note, we did decrease the, after the uh, 1920 budget year, knowing that we had the tornado and we're facing COVID, we decreased the transfer from the quarry to the general fund by $250,000 in the event that we had some instability with the learning curve and the new equipment. So this is not a detriment and will not hurt the fund balance at the Rock Quarry. Thank you. Yes, sir. All in favor? Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Real quick. So I spoke with Mr. Monsley. And you know, safety, right, you keep the small trucks away from the, the big trucks. And also, you know, do you be used to, to keep cleaned up around the plant, which keeps it operating, uh, keeps it on schedule. And uh, they was using a previous one that was a uh, broke down roads and bridges department that uh, they lumped along for as long as they could. But uh, that's all. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Van Land Substation Emergency Services. On November 22nd, 2016, the county signed an agreement and sent the stock with J. Davis Construction for the initial design development for the county Oconee County Fire Services Bounty Land Substation. Purchase order 52579 was issued. This was awarded to J. Davis Construction under RFP 11-23 on-call design bill. In March of 2017, it was decided that facilities maintenance would construct the Bounty Land Substation and change order one to PO number 52579 was issued to cancel the purchase order and pay expenses incurred to J. Davis Construction. Staff proceeded with issuing purchase orders for materials to construct the building in-house. Roads and bridges completed the majority of the site work and applied for the encroachment permit with the South Carolina DOT. The site distance was never verified and it was possible additional grading will be required to obtain the required site distance. If proper site distance cannot be attained, a flashing light will be required. Early in, two, early in 2019, it was decided the county would re renovate a current structure owned by the school district of Oconee County for the living quarters and a two-bay garage would be built to house the equipment and the fire trucks. Therefore, letters were issued in May of 2019 canceling the purchase orders issued to vendors for materials for the in-house construction. In October 2020, a decision, <clears throat> a decision was made to proceed with the Bandline substation project. Staff contacted Jay Davis asking if they would consider picking back up where they left off when the project was canceled and Jay Davis agreed. Since the project was started with Jay Davis on RFP 11-23 on-call design build and front-end documents and costs had already been established, provided and paid for as staff's recommendation negotiate with Jay Davis construction to resume the agreement, consensus docs, and construct the building under RFP 11-23 on-call design bill. Once a construction cost is established, <clears throat> staff will return to council requesting approval for con construction. <clears throat> is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Is this the same place there at the school that they've started the grading on and then, okay. Yes, sir. There's still not a way in and out of there for a truck. I mean, a fire truck. If, when there's, if it happens at lunchtime and those kids are out there, on the, you can't get off the road to let a truck by because the ditches are too deep. So, so I, I'm all for, I know we need a, a fire department there. But I think we need a better place that will serve that area better than this because there's no way of getting a truck at certain times out of there because of the traffic of that school. Yes, sir, that was my concern as well. I spoke Friday with Mr. Davis at length about this. I spoke, to, spoke this morning with Chief Crine about this. Mr. Cottle, Seneca City Fire Chief, and I have discussed this as well since this is part of where in that really close negotiated contract area. They assure me they can get out. They have fire trucks, they have sirens. They assure me they can get out. Most of the time where there's a heavy traffic impact analysis, they'll use the opposite lane. They don't, they don't go in the lane of traffic, they use the absolute opposite lane. 
you and I, I, I would not be comfortable doing that. I'm not trained to do that. I, I, I would not be comfortable in opposing traffic facing a vehicle. But apparently there is a profound respect for emergency services and emergency vehicles within our area. And people do have a tendency to do whatever they can to get out of the way. I'm not arguing at all with you, Mr. Hart. I feel the same way. I have been assured that staff believes that this is the best location. And as we all know, and I know you do because you've been on council so long, there is such a small donut area. It is literally like 800, 1,800 and some odd feet where we have to build this substation for it to reach the ISO standard in both directions. That's the kicker, is that the, the location requirement is either there, it's between the South Cove Road where the Workforce Development Center, is that the name of that? I think I'm, misprint, I think I'm misstating the name of it. There's a Workforce Development Center on the site of the school district. If you're facing the Hamilton Careers, the former Hamilton Career Center, it's on the left. So it would have to be from that building, but before you got to Blue Ridge Bank on Bounty Land Road. That's your window of land. And that is the only available place where the ISO hits both sides of that spectrum going all the way up past the Richland Creek to the furthest reaching house up off of Ebenezer. It's just, it's not an ideal place. Um, I know that we've all discussed this before. I think we'll have some backup from the city of Seneca and Chief, if I'm speaking out of turn, then come up here and correct me. I mean, I mean we, we looked at it. Um, it's can not you, really can you ideal step place. up? Um, Chief Caudill, please, I'm sorry. State your name for the record. So everybody knows you're not an imposter. Hey, I'm Chief Caldell with Seneca Fire Department. Um, I've been there just about two and a half years. I came from Kiwi Fire Department after 10 years. But um, we've, we've talked about it. We've been talking about this since, well, me and Chief Crown have been working on it harder now than we did a few years ago. But it's, it's not the most ideal place. Uh, I would love to find a better location. Part of what we wanted to move out there was possibly a ladder truck at times. But it's going to be tough getting in and out of there. But we can make it happen. The problem is we've been working on this for years and we're not providing any better protection by keep talking about it. We need to find some, some kind of stable area to put this thing and let's move forward with trying to provide that protection. While we're sitting around talking about it, it's building up around us and we're not moving forward. Um, I've talked to uh, Ms. Brock and I've talked to Chief Crime. We've talked about manning that station you know, as part of the contract that we have now. Um, we, we ran 2,469 calls this year out of one station, out of headquarters in Seneca as part of the city and the contracted area. Uh, this station would help alleviate a lot of that response time getting out to that area. So, no, it's not the most opportune place, but if wherever we build it, we'll make it work. Um, I just, you know, if we could find a, a little better location, it'd be wonderful, but I know this is paid for. With the money that's available, the problem is, is if we go out and start buying more property, we're going to reduce the cost of building the station to have living quarters to be able to put people in at 24 hours a day. If we're just going to build a station and not man it 24 hours a day with people, we're not really providing a better service. Building a station and not manning it may lower your insurance rates, but we're giving you a false sense of security if we're not going to get a truck out of there and bring it to your house and put the fire out. So I, I appreciate it. I, I've told her we'll do anything. I talked to Mr. Motor this morning. We'll do anything to make this you know, happen and, and help provide that service and help provide the manpower to cover that station. We just got to you know, figure out our next step though. To get it done, I know me and Chief Crown have talked about it, and, and I'm sure you got any input on that. So. And actually, Chief Crown, if you wouldn't mind reiterating what you and I discussed. Sure. One of the one of the things that we um, look at, and we looked at when we looked at putting this station directly on uh, um, right there at the intersection of the school. One of the reasons why we stopped is DOT did not give us an easement to actually gain access, we would have to come through the school property, which kind of eliminated that property um, from the uh, development. And that was one of the changes um, when we were going to re uh, remodel that facility and put up a garage, which pushes us back onto South Cove Road to be in that circle. There are, and, and I've been at many stations that we have red light uh, alert buttons that basically deal, we work with DOT, we get an alert, we, we Time it, we'll do a study, time it to where when we push the button, that light is going to change. That light runs all traffic out. Kiwi School Road traffic stops so that we can go right or left. We would also time the red light on Highway 28 so that that is actually the problem. The Highway 28 
and um, red light right there in Bounty Land backs up, which creates a lot of the problem with the school um, and the traffic there at South Cove Road. Um, so it's not just the one intersection that is the problem. The, um, it is both, and we would have to work with DOC. But that is a, a feasibility. Um, we did it when in years ago um, in, in Greenville at the station, um, one of the stations that I was at, to get us able to get out easily. It's done on Augusta mm -hmm. Road for the, the Greenville City um, Fire Department, right there on Augusta Road and Ferris Road. It's, it's a four-lane intersection that is done, so it is doable. Um, to, to allow us to get out quickly. We've already started this facility. Um, we've spent money. Um, we can make this happen with, um, and not have to go purchase more land, do more development, do more clearing, um, and then change it. If we need to get a secondary access, um, there possibly is an opportunity in the back um, to actually come through the school district's property um, to actually have a back, back access. We haven't um, pursued that, but the, the, the properties are contiguous, and so it's, it's possible. Um, and when it comes to access, it, we, we haven't gone down the road. If we need to change the, the entrance or whatever, it is the way that property is sitting. We can add space on that road for access in the, in the development of it. We're not too far down the road that we haven't developed it too far to change the footprint of the driveway. Um, so there's a lot of options that we have there um, to, to serve the citizens. Since I've been here, um, when the plan was developed, we talked about this station, and we still haven't done anything for those people on either end um, in that area. It's been talked about, it's been talked about, and we've run down the road, and then we, we stopped. And, and I, I would, uh, you know, would say, please support us in, in going forward on this. I will make it a priority to, to work with Seneca to get what we need done to help our citizens in, in, that, um, in that case. Mr. Chairman, I have to remind myself that I only drive a fire truck as a child. And so, I, I, you know, I, I never got a chance to honk the horn or anything like that. So, but I, you know, originally when this kind of came up, I was kind of the one that pulled this going, whoa, you know, because of Hamilton Career Center. Now, Hamilton Career Center has been moved out, so the traffic on that is cut in half. Um, so, again, I also have to remind myself that fire trucks drive through the middle of uh, New York City and driving all it. And what y'all do and how y'all drive is pretty amazing. So, you know, thank you. So. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So I agree that this is a much needed fire station and uh, the concerns also, you know, about traffic. Uh, so the money's been set aside, you know, since 2016. One thing has been consistent since 2016, and that is the cost of material has skyrocketed. And uh, so obviously this is going to come back higher than anticipated. Uh, but with that being said, and conditions changing so much, I guess my question is, why are we not sending it back out for bid again? Because what you're doing here is you're, you're having a non-competitive bid with J. Davis Construction, which probably is not going to work out the best for the taxpayers. That's all. If I may answer that question, yes, please. Mr. Graham, I think that's a great point. Um, when the fire plan was presented and approved by council originally on December 21st, 2010, um, it, that all 10 of the substations went out to bid at one time so that we could collect and gather data for one design that was appropriate for more, it's like basically like cookie cutter substations. So that process was followed. Um, we do have to follow our own procurement policies and guidelines. Particularly this time though is so that we wouldn't have to redraw them. Sometimes the cost of the building materials is secondary to the cost of the drawing and the architectural studies that go with this. That's um, what the request is, is for us to continue because we already do have the drawing. We had two options for drawings at the time, and Chief Crumb, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, I'm working straight off memory. And my once photographic memory still does have Kodak moments, but... We had two separate designs, one where we could do a pull-in and have an expansion option for there to be a, a living quarters added at a later time. And I think that second option was basically the same one that you have at Village Creek there in Whetstone, where it was just basically a substation without the intention of ever having living quarters on them. But they were put out to bid at one time. 
Um, now, obviously, it wouldn't be a problem to put them back out to bid, but it would just be a further delay for us, and then we would have to do a redesign based on the property location and the site work that we've already completed. Thank you. But we could do that, obviously, with council direction. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So was that, uh, I missed the count there. Four. Four. Four and an extension. Okay. Council committee reports. Planning and economic <laughs> development. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we Planning and Economic Development Committee met December 15, 2020 at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, a few things on the agenda. Continued discussion regarding land use planning in relation to gun ranges and ancillary uses. I noted this discussion was tabled from the last meeting on November 17, 2020. Mr. Root, our attorney, noted that there would need to be a motion to recall this discussion, and if no motion was made, the motion would die. He further noted that because it was not an ordinance, the discussion should be brought back up at a later time. No motion was made to recall the item from the table motion, and so it did not. Now we continue discussion regarding corridors along highways 130, 183, and 188 with regard to signs. Mr. Chapman, our planning director, addressed the committee and gave a brief update. Mr. Davis made a motion, seconded by Mr. Elliott, approved unanimously to refer to full council on the second meeting in January 2021 for establishment of traffic corridor design standards, and that was uh, dealt with at this meeting we're here uh, presiding over. There's uh, additionally discussion on regulations regarding architectural design elements along certain corridors in Oconee County. Again, Mr. Chapman addressed the committee and noticed that uh, there are two design protocols for two different kinds of sets of quarters within the county. At a previous meeting, he noted the committee had given five different quarters, and the planning commission added three additional quarters that needed to be addressed throughout the county. Mr. Davis made a motion seconded by Mr. Elliott and unanimously approved to refer to full council on the second meeting of January of 2021 for establishment of a late corridor sign standards, which was uh, approved this meeting we're uh, currently in. Uh, the next Planning and Economic Development Committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 16, 2021, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Board and Commission appointments. Aeronautics Commission. District 2, we have two questionnaires on file, one requesting the appointment. Are there any nominations? I'd like to nominate Mr. Dan Sertoth. And... With that being said, Mr. Bryant's currently been serving, and I spoke with Mr. Bryant. He would like to keep his uh, questionnaire on file, you know, and that large comes up. Mr. Sertoth, he has served previously on the board, and he stepped down to help the sheriff start his aviation program, and he is requesting to uh, take another appointment. No other nominations. Uh Dan Sudoff? Yes, sir. It's, it's for, it's for, uh, uh, it's for approval. Aye. 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 District 4. One. Mr. Chairman, if I'm, uh, I'm sorry, just because this is a different protocol, we haven't done it since for two years. You just have the nomination, and you don't need a second, and you just call all in favor or any opposed, and then okay. appointed as a council. I'm sorry to interrupt. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Mr. David Bryant for the at-bar seat. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, District uh, 4, one questionnaire requesting reappointment. We do, have, we do have a nomination for District 5. I'd like to nominate, if there was no other nominations, Mr. Michael Gray for District 5 Aeronautics Commission. Why would you do that? I, can, uh, I, didn't, I, I was waiting on any nominations. 
Do you have another nomination? That's I have one that's waiting on his paperwork to get in. That's fine. I will draw my nomination. Okay, back to District 4. One question there requesting reappointment. Yes, sir. I'd like to nominate Mr. Marion Lyons, please. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Uh, District 5, one questionnaire on file for this seat. There are no nominations. Well, I, I don't know who it is. What, 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 what is it? D District 5, I believe that's is it Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, was, that's the one. I, I apologize. There was Mr. Gray and Mr. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I, th that's what I. That's okay. what I said. That's, that was my apologies yeah. to you. I, I saw that on there. I didn't want it to pass. I'm sorry. The feller is not one of those. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm waiting on him. Okay. So no, no, no nominations. Uh, we have. Uh, well, we just filled out large, right? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We Our cultural advisory committee, District Two, no questionnaires. District Four, one questionnaire on file for this seat. Yes, sir. I would like to nominate uh, Ashley Townsend. Oh, sorry. That's, not, that's Mount Rest. That's like District 4. That was my question. That's an incorrect district. Or incorrect district. This is going to be a good well, That's what my question was. Um, I believe, let me check on that one because there was two addresses that I had. And I know she works at Chattooga Bell Farm, but um, if she has not moved, she uh, right now she's actually in Mr. Durham's district. So um, the district, what I have here is invalid because it's the wrong thing. So I'm just going to hold off on that one. Okay, so I guess Mr. Correct Mr. Answer. Chairman, she may be in your district because the Tuga Ridge right there, the line is is right there close on the Tuga Ridge. So she may. We just have to verify that. Yeah. I know. I know. I look it up. Um, I always. I always look at that. Okay. So I know okay. I look it up, but um, I will. Um, I can also verify and bring it back. All right, I'll, I'll make the nomination with verification of address. I, I, I think that's the correct. I just want to make sure. When I saw Matt and Rest, I know there's like a right. sliver out there, so I'll make that nomination for Ashley Townsend. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, uh, District 5, two questions on file. On agriculture? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I will go with Charlie. With plotting as uh, in agriculture. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. And at large, one questionnaire on file. I can nominate Mr. Rex Plan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Arson Historical Commission, District 2, no questionnaire, District 4, one questionnaire on file. Yes, sir. I'd like to. Nominate Miss Davis. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board of Zoning Appeals, District 2, one question you're on file. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Miss Gwen Fowler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, District 4, one question you're on file. Yes, I'd like to. Uh, Reappoint uh, Marty McKee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. District 5 and at large, no questionnaire. Library board, six at large seats. We've got five questionnaires on file. I'd like to, we, we, can't, we have to do one at a time. I'm sorry. Well, we, I've already, we've already asked that before. Yeah, yeah, it's the best way to do it. I'm sorry. I'd like to nominate Shelby Henderson, please, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to nominate Charles Holcomb. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nominate Allison Griffin Addison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Miranda, from West Union Road. All in favor? Aye. 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 
75, Chattooga Lake Road. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Planning Commission, District 2, one question here on file. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Mr. Dave Nix. All in favor? Uh, Aye. District 4, one question here. Yes, sir. I'd like to re Mr. Frankie Pearson, please. All in favor? Uh, Aye. District 5, no question. No. Oops. I'm opposed. Okay. okay. One opposed. District 5, no question on file at large. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Mike Johnson for reappointment. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, opposed. Council will enter into executive session for the following purposes. Number one, discussion regarding an economic development matter, Project Rise. And two, discuss personnel matter regarding county administrator, including performance review. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye.
was taken in executive session. Mr. Root? Yes, sir. Motion to reconvene. Oh, so, excuse me. Motion to reconvene. I'm still learning. <laughs> Second the motion. Did you all vote on it? Second on the motion. Uh, uh, I think we uh, a second on the motion. I got it. Yeah, I stopped. Uh, I voted in favor. Thank you. We're properly back in session. There's no. Action needed on Project RISE as to the county administrator's um, performance review. I'm coalescing the, the conversation, the essence of it, so please tell me if I'm wrong. But we need a motion to confirm the county administrator's performance as satisfactory, in fact, excellent, and to confirm the contractual raise amount of $5,000, which is embedded in the current contract, and also to pledge council support to provide the, the county administrator with needed support staff. Hello. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <coughs> Motion to 